I use these Rubbermaid totes. This one's about, I don't know, eight inches deep. So after I boil them, and I just use baking soda, I've painted some, I've done all kinds of different things, but just boiling them, baking soda is probably the best for, you know, every time of the year. You can see I got some of the old leads that I used to use that are painted. So I'll throw them in this tote with layers, uh, just layers of spruce bars. See, I got some more snares here in the bottom. These are link snares. And all my snares, when I build them, they're all wired in bundles of five. And I just wrap a simple wire around them just to keep them sorted. Yeah, I'll just throw one spruce ball or two and cover it up. Put another two or three in here and then that's all I do for scent after I boil them. And yeah, these are all sets of fives. So I know if I grab three bundles, I got 15 snares. I don't have to. And uh, I try to stick to setting five at a time in a set. So I know that here I've set 15 so far. And uh, I'm going to set another 10 here. So. so here's one of my snares all set up. So this is my support wire, which is just twisted on there. I get it on there nice and tight so it don't move. Then I bring it out to here. The snare is actually coming from that side. I usually tie it on that side. But that tree's a bit small for wolves. So I got it this guy here. And I just choke it up as high I can get it. Well, I could probably get it up higher, but that's about six feet high. And that's an eight foot lead all the way down. So when they get caught, this will just pull out of 750 breakaway. Camelock. So the reason for having such a long lead is well, it's easier to find a good support tree. Um, when they get caught, they feel that fall around their neck because that's a bigger lock and it falls instantly. And as soon as it touches them, they feel that and they bolt. They'll bolt and uh, it'll give them, you know, seven or eight feet of, you know, time to speed up. And when that snare hits on the end of it, she's almost instant because it busts her two arteries basically. We can get one this year here. Uh, I just start setting, so but if I can get one, then uh, I'll show you when we skin them out. Both arteries on the neck are just busted. And none of these branches on the, like none of this stuff is damaged or nothing. There's no signs of struggle. They just run and boom, they're dead. You can see my quad over there. Um, and that's where I put a whole bunch of bait. Now, I won't have any snares here for at least 75 yards, 50, 50 to 75 yards. Because the birds will come in here. And way over, probably 300 yards, I got another bait. And there's a creek down here. There's a creek that runs all the way down here, just steep embankment. And then the trail parallels up that way. So there's a trail going that way and a creek going this way. So it's kind of a little ridge here, all this thick stuff. And I'll have 25 snares set between the two baits. And I've baited here for a while, so they've been running back and forth. And they're kind of telling me where I should set that way. Got this old logging road and the wolves are always traveling up and down this road here. And it goes all the way down that way. They're always traveling through here. And at the back here, there's a creek. See where those spruce trees, just on the other side. And on this side of that, on this side of the ridge, there's a creek. And uh, yeah, they're always traveling through here. So I got a bait. I just throw it out in the open here about 75, 50 to 75 yards from the trees. 
and I got probably 25, 30 snares in here. So they'll travel this road and they'll want to, you know, tuck into the trees there and come in from the backside and sometimes come in from the open and go into the bush. You want to set your bait far enough, at least, at least bare minimum 50 yards, just for the birds. It's not so bad in the open like that, but what I did here as well is I got this bait and all those snares. And then over here, so down that trail, there's a trail that goes right down and crosses a creek and it goes up. You can see actually that cut line over there. That's all that same line that comes all the way down here. So I went down that way and I set a bait on the creek side of those spruce trees. And uh, I got a whole bunch of snares in there. So they'll be going from that bait site to the one back here. It's been a good spot. I've always caught them coming through that clump there. Just wanted to show you guys from a distance what it looks like. We're on that same old logging road. No truck traffic here by all means. It's, they took all the bridges and culverts out. It's more or less a quad trail now, but uh, I got a set here. Lynx pen, double-sided. You can barely see it in there. Yeah, so here it is. There's the old CD. You can see in the background there's a trail in the quad. And the closest you can get to the trail, the better, because they're always walking this trail. And you try and catch your eye with the CD here. Two snares and lightly blocked in on both sides. I didn't have to do a whole lot here. It was kind of a natural one. I didn't use a bait pole on this one. I uh, tied it to the tree, but these snares aren't on drag poles. I tied them right to the spruce tree, but I prefer drag poles. You just stick it in the ground ever so lightly. You know, an eight foot pole, and they'll, you know, eight foot pole, they, they can just barely drag it, but they don't go very far. You'll find them dead right here, but then you know, they don't destroy your whole set. This is just an older set that I had and I reset it. It's been pretty good. So this would be one of my favorite sets. I try and find a spruce tree that's really, really thick on the base. So you got all your branches you need just to build this cubby. One snare. You can hammer your bait to the tree, but I just find it easier if the bait goes missing for any reason, you just grab the pole, you can bring it out instead of working inside the pen. I find that the weasels and mice don't get to it as much. See, the bait seems to last longer. Yeah. So yeah, just very lightly blocked in. And you can see right through it. That's why I like using the dry branches versus green branches because they can see right through there doesn't they? they walk right around there and they can see through there and they don't feel like it's uh seems to not scare them as much sounds seems more appealing they're not like weasels right they don't like to go into tight spots and dark spots as much they like the wide open Yeah, and the snare would be tied on to an eight-foot pole and right there. And the reason it's not on it, it's because we got one here. Smaller one, but here's the pole. That's as far as he went. Yeah, so that pole was, you know, stuck up on the tree and angled towards the tree. 
so the bottom they get as soon as they pull on it it kicks out and they can drag it and obviously you drag it out of there and as far as he went and I didn't touch this pen it uh he didn't touch it at all that pole was just right in the ground there and stuck right up in the trees and the branches that's why I don't clear too many branches here yeah, I didn't go very far. So yeah, that's the fifth one for this year. And uh, today's December 25th, Christmas Day. So I'm only allowed five, so that's the end of it for Lynx. If you watch my other videos, you'll see the other Lynx that I got. But uh, I had to check the traps at night after work. So I didn't get to film them. Well, I didn't think I was going to get four that night. So, anyways. <laughs> hopefully we get some more critters and we can do some more filming. Alright.